Welcome back. Now, South Africa has its own eye in the sky. A Gauteng company is producing Africa's first ever unmanned aerial vehicles. Drone reconnaissance surveillance is used in defense and other industries. And around 250 local engineers from top universities worked on the prototype. So let's get a bird's eye view of the project from Melcore Marketing and Communications Director, Daniel Duplessis. Joining me this morning, Daniel, thank you so much for your time. I mean, what does this uh, innovation mean? I suppose not only for South Africa, but the continent at large. Thanks so much for having me, Tamela. It's an honor to be, to be present and talking about something that's quite exciting mm. for South Africa and the defense industry as all. Well. And um, these these type of vehicles are very uh, elite. Uh, only a certain, certain amount of countries have the capability of manufacturing unmanned aerial vehicles of the scale. It, uh, it therefore, the local produce, production of these type of vehicles and these scale uh, UAVs actually put South Africa within an elite few countries that have the ability to produce them. And this also opens up doors for South Africa's capabilities in peacekeeping operations and, and humanitarian efforts throughout the rest of the continent as well. Yeah, I understand a 20-year gap that was closed here. What took so long? So uh, the main reason that unmanned aerial vehicles haven't been progressing in the South African market uh, is because of the requirement there thereof. I think we had some previous capabilities, uh, but the development of newer generation to keep up with the Western markets and their technologies hasn't been emphasized enough mainly due to the requirement and operational use of those systems. Uh, I think also as a private company, it's also quite worth mentioning that developing the skills required and maintaining the personnel within this, this capability and this sphere uh, is also quite important as well. Mm, absolutely. And understand that it also equally took 250 engineers, uh, Daniel, to get this innovation done. That, that's correct. So, so we have uh, in Cape Town about 200 engineers mm. working dedicated on aeronautical, aeromechanical, hardware and software developments of various types, integration, system engineers, previous pilots that also offer some training solutions to develop a complete system and a complete solution uh, to government entities to make use of this this aircraft yeah one may wonder i mean what's then the significance of you know celebrating a development like this a locally produced defense equipment and solution uh for one's country so one of the main benefits and and i think something that's also worth mentioning in a general sense but specifically applies to this this project as well is that the local support that you require for a system such as this to increase the life cycle and operational use ability. So in other words, how often can you actually use the equipment that you've procured is heavily dependent on the after sales support. And for a country then to develop its own capabilities of manufacturing, under, undertaking maintenance operations and field service operations, as well as training and localized support, that tremendously increases the life cycle of a product. Mm. And it also, therefore, supersedes the, the, the acquisition from a foreign entity, for example. Yeah. And I suppose that also explains your, your close working relationship and support uh, to the uh, Department of, of Defense here as Milko. Yeah, so we were quite privileged to actually sign a memorandum of understanding with the Department of Defense, the South African Air Force and Arms Corps uh, for the use of their facilities to test and develop and qualify this UAV during a, the inaugural flight testing procedures. And this also allows us to actually engage with them on a regular basis to make sure that whatever solution we develop is actually useful for them in the future. And we've actually gone as far as to dedicating five units uh, for South African use hmm. within the next year. Give us some details, perhaps, Daniel, in terms of capabilities here. Uh, when we talk about flight time, uh, kilograms of external payloads for various types of sensors, uh, you know, the usage across multiple sectors, just in terms of combating existing issues in border security and maritime issues. I mean, perhaps take us through here the components. All right. So that's actually yeah, that's one of my fourth days. I enjoy talking about <laughs> these things. So. The, the, to understand the, the principle behind this vehicle, you have to understand why it was designed and what its operational use, its main purpose use is. So it's made to stay in the air for as long as possible 
and gather as much information as possible, sending it down to a ground control station where ground-based personnel is actually operating this UAV. Mm. So the flight time, therefore, is more than 35 hours. It has a range of more than 2,000 kilometers. And as you correctly mentioned, it has about 210 kilograms of external payload. Now, this can vary between different types of sensors. If you want to gather information of imagery, if you want to gather information of radar signatures, if you want to gather information of intelligence, uh, such as signals and, and things like that, you can use this uh, with a multitude of electronic sensors to gather as much information as possible and feed that information in real time. Mm. One of the major benefits of this type of UAV is that it, is cross, it, is, it can be used across multiple branches. Um, I think one of the major things that, that we've looked at as well is that this is primarily a reconnaissance and surveillance vehicle, meaning that it's supposed to stay in the air and gather as much information as possible, but it could be used by different branches of government. Um, and in the future, possibly some of the technologies could also be used in the civilian market. Uh, this uh, then opens the door for current uh, issues that we face mm. in terms of maritime surveillance, economic zone monitoring, conservational efforts that's also becoming quite a big problem, as well as serious issues such as border control issues and other looming threats that might be arising in South Africa. So making this a top priority is actually quite essential, and that's why we're working quite hard uh, to make sure that this system is available as soon as possible. Oh, I appreciate you, of course, talking to us about this, Daniel, and giving us this update. And also kudos to all those uh, 250 local engineers coming from, you know, top universities in the country, assisting, coming together as a team uh, to bridge this 20-year gap innovation. Uh, first locally produced, quite a milestone. And I appreciate you, Head of Marketing and Communications Director, Daniel Duplessis, for talking to us about this this morning.